Hey everyone, Aquarium Basics here. Um, I'll show you real quick. I just wanted to bring my living room into this a little bit. And uh, so anyway, there's, you know, a little fire and my little Egyptian King Tut. And just kind of wanting to show you a little farther back, just to show you what you're really seeing from where you're sitting and eating dinner and stuff. But, you know, this one is on plants. I want to keep it pretty straightforward because if I deviate, I just, I don't want to lose people. So here we go. Um... I've tried all kinds of different plants. Um, I've bought them from PetSmart. I've bought them from the local place, you know, even debated some bringing some local stuff in that was like growing in our local lake or something. But, uh, you know, basically there are going to be plants that do better and worse no matter what. And so some gardeners, you know, when you become a professional gardener, usually they have a higher variety of plants that they consider as, you know, for advanced people. So they enjoy those, obviously more and they have challenges too so i mean someone keeping a bonsai garden's got a lot more of a challenge than keeping a you know a couple trees in the yard or something obviously so uh but what i wanted to talk about is the plants before i get into what and uh, what they are and how they grow and the things to avoid and blah 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 i'd like to talk about the fact that the plants cause something in our brains called neurotropic factor i think i'm saying that right and basically your brain is producing certain uh, endocrine system kind of stuff uh, that makes you feel really good or makes you feel a little more connected or alive and some even say it might even help with disease and this neurotropic factor what it is is when you focus on nature you're actually getting some of that neurotropic factor and I believe no matter where I mean, so, you know, here I'm looking down and I'm seeing the plants and the looks like you're basically in the woods. I mean, that you know, some people would get really upset and say, I'm making an Amazon basin or something. But, you know, you're you're bringing in some kind of natural environment and the fish do that as well. So technically, you know, part of the reason to having these plants, it's not just that, you know, that's the only way to keep an aquarium. It's actually that they provide a lot of uh of that neurotropic factor that you'll find when you're in your office or when things like that. And I'm telling you that even though this is a chore and a lot of things go into this and it can be simpler too, if you have the money, I mean, since I bought that filter on the right or the light on top that I've had some stuff in my other videos of some earlier filters and man, this has been a lot easier. So, you know, yeah, throw money at anything and drop $3,000 and someone's going to make you a really nice tank, you know? So it's as simple as that, too. You hire somebody or something. But, you know, uh, where I'm coming from is, is that these plants and the fish, of course, too, are natural. So they are creating uh, a certain amount of this stuff. And apparently it's really good for you in more than one way. And the easiest way to really say that is, is you know, everyone knows it's nice to have an aquarium in the corner of the room or the restaurant or and it's sad because, you know, a little bit of that, we've had lost touch of that because of the amount of work and the amount of money and, you know, a restaurant, if they're hardly even getting by, you know, they're not going to have that, you know, probably someone would charge upwards to a couple hundred to even 500 bucks, a, I would say a week or a month for taking care of something that was like a huge coral, you know, tank or something. So, I mean, it takes work, you know, so, but it was such a big part of our restaurants and stuff for years back, so... And uh, anyway, so what, what I'm getting here with plants is, is that there are several varieties, like I said, um, some do better, some do worse. And that's really your best friend because what I look for, because uh, I've tried to plant a lot of stuff and there have been many that have just not been able to really make it thrive or start. One is moss. I'll start with moss. Like you'll see all this moss in these people's aquariums and for some reason, I just, I think it might be my Placostomus because he just rips it up too much for it to never really form or something. And maybe the other plant's aggression has given it real no, it's given it no space really. I don't know, but I, I see people with moss all over the place and I just can't do it. And that is one thing I would like to maybe learn, but unfortunately I might be moving here soon, soon which is why I want to make this video. Because I don't know how many more I'm going to be able to make this. So I want to get it done. So yes, the, they're your, you know, they're, they're thriving plants and they're non-thriving plants. And you want to, uh, basically, if you're a beginner or even someone like me where it's pretty disappointing if you buy something and now it's not there and you have to buy something else. 
Uh, you know, I'm just wanting to fill the tank with several different varieties. And so at first there were some that didn't make it, you know, and partly my fault, the way I was doing it. Uh, probably now I might even not have had a problem with them. But, uh, you know, look for the plant that is aggressive, you know. Uh, unfortunately, some people would say the opposite with like coral and stuff. Like I guess some coral is too aggressive and kind of keeps the other ones from growing because it stings it and things like that. But anyway, uh, here though, you know, the plants, the only problem with overgrowth is uh, not enough light to the bottom because suddenly you get this unbelievable large plant trying to take up. Like you can see one on the left there that that is an example of one. One gets so big that obviously below it has a certain shade to it. So, but you know, I, I highly recommend just, here's what you can tell is you go to the pet store and you'll see one plant that's just taken over their aquarium. And then you'll see another plant that looks stringy and it's already got some yellowing leaves and, and, and it, you know, it is, it's small too. And I hate to say it, but the smaller plants, you pose a worse of a chance of them, uh, not making it in your tank because the more the merrier. And unfortunately that's a sad law of the whole thing. So, um, you know, basically pick aggressive growing plants that look like they're already, you know, in total fruition in the aquarium store that is your best bet and you'll find that yes those will fill it up in fact if i didn't cut any of these or maybe just trimmed them the whole tank would be filled with whatever it is on the right and so that okay that brings me to one of my uh higher up deals here is that you know i don't know really what any of these plants are called and i'm gonna admit that because i think it's hilarious how these guys know like the true like name of it or whatever the uh you know, Amazonian this or that, or all the different phylums and species. I mean, I have no idea, you know. What I do know is, is like, I know what a sword is, okay? And apparently, yes, what is the grass on the bottom is either called uh, dwarf sag or dwarf val. I can't remember which one it is. They're both very similar, but the I think it might be the vow, it, uh, but it's a small growing grass that just kind of takes over and stuff. So, anyway, uh, what else? The uh, beard algae—it's it is a total nightmare, and partly it's my fault because I leave my tank on more for the room's atmosphere over wind to actually shut the tank off. So, I mean, partly the problem is I'm keeping the light on too much, but that is also why my plants are doing so well because. Uh, there are a few plants, lettuce and stuff, that without the dark period, they're doomed. There's no way they can even live. But these plants here, you know, they kind of need light. They need what they need. And, and even that extremely, you know, brand new $150 light on top, not to give away the price of it, but it's amazing, you know. But even it is a little shy if you compare what the sunlight would be if the sunlight hit that. If the sunlight hit that for 10 minutes, it would be equal to maybe even six hours of the fluorescent uh, light there as far as what it gets. And, and uh, so, you know, that's another thing. Even though they need light, they can't really be, you know, you can't put them on a window that has, uh, sorry about that. You can't put them on a window that uh, it gets any light at all, really. I mean, you could put it on a north window where you were pretty sure there wasn't going to be hardly any heat to it at all, but... Um, sorry to repeat the words there. Um, yeah, you just basically, the, the, the plants need light, but they can't have light from the sun because that would be too much if you put it in the wrong spot or if it really is a very bright window. Um, and I don't know, I mean, you know, I could see, honestly, I'm a real fan of not using artificial light. So I think it would be kind of an interesting thing to put one by a fairly bright window and then really let that just be its only natural light. But I would imagine you'd be scraping quite a bit of algae and a lot of temperature changes. That's your main concern, I guess, is that with the, you know, with the temperature changes, you can really, really cause some problems for your fish. I'm a huge believer. So the plants, this is about plants. So plants need light. Um, and unfortunately, unless you want minimal growth, uh, you could use it like a simple Walmart fluorescent, but... In my last video, I, I made the video on lights, and uh, man, buy the good one. It's just, that's one of the few things anymore I'm really seeing is that the jerry rig is dangerous, and 
And the plants really, you know, fluorescent's okay, but they respond to LED much better. I'll tell you that right now the overall of that tank is much healthier with LED. So um, that's a 47 watt LED, which is actually not that much. I mean, they are making, you know, plant lights, LEDs are making some for, you know, $600, $500 now that are, are equal to some of the brightest lights there are. But, uh, but basically with this, uh, you don't need that much either. You know, you're not cultivating uh, your aquarium. And some people might be, actually. That's funny. I mean, in a good way, like they're, they're act I mean, it's all a good way, but they're, they're actually, you know, using several aquariums and they grow plants for people. Apparently, these people like, uh, what's his name, Dustin's Fish Tank, he says, he claims he sells plants over the internet. And I think, God, you know, I, I wouldn't even dare find the time for that with all the things I do, but... You know, the thing is, it makes sense, though, that, you know, somebody is growing these plants. So is there even a market? That's a it's a good question. I haven't even looked into it, you know. I'm assuming that, you know, you'd have to know the right people and have a serious amount of aquarium plants going and stuff. But, um, yeah, I just think for me it's completely a personal hobby, and I just want to have a good time with it. I want to love it. I want to, you know, basically, like I said, bring that nature into my life, into my living room um, and so the plants are a key element there that if there were no plants there wouldn't be quite that nature feel you would be looking at a seabed or and, and that is cool too so I mean it's really whoever's taste it is but um, you know these plant tanks are kind of a big deal like I see a lot on the internet and I'm just kind of letting them know that you know that yeah you you basically you want to pick aggressive ones if you don't or not familiar with what you're doing. That's basically the entire thing of what I'm trying to say. Um, and it's not too big a deal to know the names, but I think it would be best if we all knew the names of the plants. But unfortunately, they're not even that well labeled at the place where I get them. And, and I have tried to search the internet for like common aquarium plants, and really it was like a dead end, to be honest, as far as getting some real good pictures and names and stuff. But, uh, yeah, you know, so, and then there's some wood in there, too, which is obviously a dead plant, and, uh, you know, the wood, it does bring a lot out there. I remember when I first kind of got it going, I realized pretty soon that I needed some wood in it of some kind, and, and uh, you know, you can tie it down. Actually, I have that wood tied down with two pottery bowls. You just drill up. It actually is a great way to go, because you put the pottery bowl underneath the wood, and then drill up into it. And then what that does is that pottery that, you know, it's not the pottery bowl. It's the, it's like for a plant, that bottom pottery like base basically that you see on a lot of like pot plants and stuff. And any house plants and stuff, you'll see that they have, uh, you know, they have this aquarium that's, uh, you know, it's it's got wood in it. And, you know, you want to basically put the sand or the rock or the dirt or whatever into that uh you know that base of the the pot and uh it has enough weight to hold it down so now always though and i hate to go into wood all of a sudden but always boil the wood like even if you get it at a store i swear do yourself a favor get a, a crock pot or something and actually cook the wood for like three days because even at the store chances are it's not uh it's not been you know basically leached enough and another thing with the wood too is that some wood is very toxic to the fish so believe it or not i have uh, cedar in there i first thought that the one on the right might be pine and so i boiled it forever and it smelled like pine but then when i get it out hey everybody sorry real quick i actually uh my phone went out i forgot to delete another video and uh in the process i realized how much i jabber on about things too so don't mean to cut you off there um yeah so basically just with the plants you know last i talked about the wood and uh, the one last thing this is this is, well there's like one and a half things uh beard algae okay it's it's the only algae that i have ever had a problem with at all and the beard algae is just so invasive on the plants and even that gets on the wood it grows even on the power head bulkhead and uh, i i actually end up having to bleach the bulkhead i take it out of course and i put it in a little bit of bleach in the sink and just let it sit for a while but the beard algae is actually maybe your strongest enemy to the plants 
and and honestly, once the plants get pretty aggressively growing and rooted, even the beard algae won't stand a chance. It can take its toll, but um, you know, basically, a plant when it gets close to the light, or when that one leaf happens to be about you know twice as old as the other leaves it starts showing the signs of the beard algae. So there is some trimming even to be done. I used to think cut the corner off the leaf, but now I think that you're better off even letting the beard algae eat the entire leaf before you pluck the leaf because you can actually end up plucking too many leaves out of your plants and that's not good either. The plant, even though that leaf might not look like it's doing that great, even with all the algae, is you, you still want it. It does actually provide for the plant. Unless, I mean, the plant will actually kill it if it's causing it a problem because the plant will actually, you know, basically just stop sending life to it if it thinks it's not getting anything back. So anyway, yeah, that's a little bit of, you know, photosynthesis and all that. But the, the main thing is is that the beard algae is just horrific. It, it one, one of my friends thought it looked cool, and I thought that was so funny. He's like, look, you got something growing there. And it was almost like it was a coral or something coming off the rock or something. But no, it's this highly invasive black string that's about a centimeter long, and it just goes along and, you know, puts its kind of, it kind of takes advantage of bruised sides of leaves and stuff where it can kind of work its way in there, I guess, with a spore or whatever it is. And uh, the thing about the beard algae is there's one fish and that is the Siamese algae eater. It does an amazing job and uh, regular Plecosmus, which I have one and, uh, you know, he's, he's not a problem. He does clean the glass, but he is nothing like the Siamese algae eaters that they like end up basically you know devouring the different portions of beard algae already growing on the plant and so you know they won't go near the bulkhead though which that's a problem because they you know they find it uncomfortable to be in that much turbulence and so you know the bulkhead areas where you have to clean up bleach like I said or even most of the, honestly most of the plants that really have any kind of serious beard algae are right in front of the blower right under the leaf or I'm sorry under the light so there's a you know that's just all it is it's just uh it's a game you play now here's the other thing which is why it falls into that is co2 again I made a video on co2 but the thing is with the plants I barely let that CO2 come out. I mean, I, it's not like they tell you to count like a bubble a second or whatever, a bubble an hour or something. I mean, I'm letting mine misty, just kind of, you know, just even not, I would want to say 60 bubbles a second, but very small bubbles, you know, coming off the stone. But um, the CO2, the plants really do kind of need it. It's, it's a sad truth, you know, you want to do this, you're going to pay $150 for your CO2 setup. And it's actually really easy once you get it, as long as the, uh, as long as the sports store still has the charges in. Never buy them from your aquarium. And unfortunately, one of the hardest things is that uh, Flavel makes a very little uh, regulator, but then you have to buy its like first three cartridges. But do not keep buying those cartridges because it's a total scam. You hardly get anything. Um, you go get, there's an adapter, and the adapter is, I got it on Amazon, and it will actually adapt to a paintball gun. Uh, you know, like the CO2 charge for that. Now you're going to get almost two to three months of CO2 out of that. And once you get it all set up, though, it's $5. So, I mean, I think it is like $6 with tax to get that uh, filled up at, what, Play Again Sports or Dick's Sporting Goods or something. So, you know, you go up there, gun, gun department. I hate to ever say on this channel that someone should go to the gun department. But, yes, it's actually in the gun department to get this. And, uh... You know, you'd be careful with it driving around. And, and I've already made a video on CO2, but what for the plants, I'm saying that they need just a little bit. They do not need a large amount. In fact, you could very much hurt your fish if you did that. And you have to have some kind of oxygen current if you're going to run it because it can get really dangerous for the fish as well. So you have to have either an overhead uh, you know, filter or a bulkhead stirring up the top of the water. And... Um, so the thing about the CO2 is, is some people would want more on and then they turn it off at night because uh, the plant's really not utilizing it. But I don't do that. I, I'm really, I want to get into the flow. My biggest thing here is how to do this easily, not have to be 
constantly checking on it and stuff. So I just turn my CO2 on at the littlest amount. You just see those little bubbles coming out, uh, not too much, and then you just let it run all the time. And what I found is that's actually your greatest defense to beard algae. So promised I'd bring this back to one topic. Uh, yeah, the, so with the plants, you know, the reason the CO2 is important at night, not so much that they don't use it, it's that the, the flux down to a high oxygen environment will actually lead to more algae. So somehow the, you know, I've heard of people putting like the um, Shreklium or whatever the name of that, uh, you know, there's like different things like ones of fake oxygen. So we're, first of all, what the hell is that? Fake oxygen, you know, it's a liquid carbon basically. And then they say, oh, if you dump a lot of it in, it can, you know, kill the beard algae. But the thing is, is it'll kill your your fish. I mean, you know, anyone who's got a big tank that's got a problem, they can't be doing that because it ain't going to work. It might help, but even then, I'm so against chemicals and stuff that I just, you know, I actually have tried it a long time ago, and it did not work at all. So, Shequium, people say, dose with that, liquid, whatever it is. And uh, not me, I use just CO2. And, and that's another beauty of buying the CO2, purchasing it, is because, you know, it's just done. You got it, it's done, it's easy. I mean, I can't tell you what a pain it is to mix up that uh, CO2. Uh, they do, oh my God, the DIY, it's such a pain, and you don't get anything. And then the amount you spend on the whatever the uh, uh, yeast and, and sugar and all that, you just bought yourself three months of CO2. So, and I'm a total organic hippie person. I, I want to definitely make my own and make sure it's coming from a good place. But as far as what this is, just I'm telling you, that's what it is. So, um, you know, yeah, just the plants do need a little and a little stimulates them greatly. And I can say 100% that this tank is, uh, it is CO2 that is allowing this to be so uh, flourished, I guess, which I hate to even use that company's name. It's Flourish. In fact, I think that's the name of the stuff. Uh, flourish XL, that's what it's called. Uh, yeah, now that I realize. Okay, so, uh, you know, yeah, I don't want to be Flourish XL. You know, I want my plants to thrive. That's the word I'm looking for, so. And, oh, yeah, well, I guess here's, I hate to make this long video, I really do. One last thing is also nutrients, and I talked about that in the substrate, but it's a little different. You just want the plant. I've really found the fish do kind of create everything the plants really need. Um, I'll, you know, it's not necessarily good for the water, but if you give them a little more fish food, you actually might see uh, even a better turn for your plants than using any of those chemical companies. But one thing I do like to add, I add, I have this little mineral rock called azomite, and it's getting more popular. You might have to order it on Amazon. Azomite is a rock dust from Utah. It's kind of funny. Of all places, it's from Utah. But a uh, little, da you know, little teaspoon, not even a teaspoon, not like, a, like literally a fourth of a teaspoon or something. And I'll put that in hot water. Um, and I do have some iron, I guess. Yeah. So what I don't want to do is make everyone think that you have to have all this stuff to do it. But I will tell you that I have, uh, yes, that some iron and last some sea kelp extract and that's another garden store thing um you don't have to use the flourish sex cells or all those expensive things certainly you don't want to use any questionable uh substance like miracle grow or anything that has maybe some things that are not good for the fish at all so that's why i go with the real low mineral based seaweed you know just just to, just from the ocean it's not too much anything and then because that really that's what the plants are missing is that stuff because the fish really do provide nitrogen and there's already some phosphorus in there guarantee it just from our water and the rocks and so you know you, also the fish need minerals too so you're giving the fish minerals but here for the plants you got uh, a, a, a mineral dust in this case I use azomite you have uh Sometimes even a little bit of crushed coral even is good, a little bit. I mean, not even a, a teaspoon of it or something in there. and Just kind of makes a base. It, it, it does what you call as a buffer. So you have buffers and acids. And the, the plants need acid. The plants need a little alkali. And so, you know, luckily coral isn't a very strong one as long as you don't use too much. It's like the lime on the side of the road. You see, 
on the side of the road, the plants that are dead in the lime are brown. And then beyond that, into the ditch, you see monster plants. Why? Because they had the right amount of carbon. Because they got the amount of lime that they need to then become the overgrown ditch that the guy has to, you know, go along and mow and all that. Why does those plants grow so strongly, you know? And that's why, partly why, anyway, and uh, light, too, but... Basically, coral, a little bit of calcium, it's a little bit of a buffer base for the water. Um, you'll find that after time, a lot of the stuff breaking down is actually making it, uh, uh, real. I don't, I, I keep my pH at like a 7 or an 8, maybe. Never would I ever try to adjust a pH down to 5.5. I mean, the, just the people that do that are neurotic, and they really have no reason to do it. And maybe in uh, coral, once again, I'd probably have some respect for the kind of alkali you'd have to keep with coral, but I would think even there would be greater. So, uh, But people trying to put acid in to make acid for the plants is is a no-go. Honestly, I w you know, you can get a certain few things that'll do that, but it won't work. And and whatever real buffers in the water to begin with, it's going to buffer up to that anyway, eventually. So, you know, like I said before, I use a little bit of reverse osmosis and a little bit of regular water. Um, uh, you know, but tap water even, I would not put an acid in there at all. I've tried vitamin C. I've tried... Uh, uh, I've, you know, although a little vitamin C will actually get rid of chlorine. So if you think you might have dumped in a bunch that is very chlorinated that you just pulled out of the faucet or something, but it has to be absorbic acid. It cannot be uh, a chunk of vitamin C or it's certainly not squeezing a lime or a lemon in there or anything like that. So, you know, bases and things like that. And I'm just rattling on forever, but I'm really hoping that uh, you guys can get something out of this and, and, and really get the most out of plants. And the, the thing is, they're very quite simple, too. I and mean, what I just gave you was like, you know, the cold, hard facts. And uh, remember, it's easier than that. It really is. It, it's just most people could probably go put a plant in a totally gravel bottom. As long as it's weighed down enough to stay in the gravel, it's going to probably root. And so, you know, this is just, like I said, getting you to where you see some of the things that might be out there. And that's it. So, uh, great. Thanks a lot for listening. Long video.